Hey all here OS Reviews. About a year ago we did a review on the Alcatel Go Flip, a fairly affordable flip phone that ran on KaiOS, an up-and-coming operating system designed for flip phones and quote-unquote dumb phones, which are already smarter than flip phones from yesteryear. It actually uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 210 processor, which is quad-core, has built-in Wi-Fi, and KaiOS itself even has an app store. Well, at the time, I wasn't a big fan of the Go Flip just because it sold for around $70, which I think is a little bit high in terms of the price compared to some other low-end Android phones which were available. And furthermore, the Go Flip, which is available through T-Mobile, unfortunately has a lot of restrictions, such as, for some reason, T-Mobile decided to ban and remove the app store function. Restricting those features, it was essentially like any other dumb phone. And again, the price itself of around $70 to $80 at the time was also not extremely competitive. Well, a year later, and things have kind of changed. Alcatel has since sold the Go Flip to pretty much every single carrier, and we're checking out a version today designed for track phone and total wireless, which uh, actually does have the KaiOS store enabled. What's even more incredible is in the month since, because this phone has become really popular, uh, the version here can be found on Amazon for around $9. So without any contract at all, you're getting a device which is a pretty insane value now. It has the same Snapdragon 210 processor, which is quad-core, clocked at 1.1 gigahertz. actually has a newer version of KaiOS, the operating system, than the one from T-Mobile, which has not received any updates. It's basically on... You can think of it as version zero. Anyways, there's some quick instruction manuals. There's also a micro USB cable slash wall plug. And then we have just the phone itself. So let's peel off some of the protective film. Small display on the front for showing you time and date information. Another one covering up and protecting the display inside. Back cover is removable, by the way, so you can also pop out and swap the battery if you want to do that. Underneath it, you can find access to the micro SD card slot for expanding the memory, and also the SIM card slot. The battery capacity, by the way, is 1,350 milliamp hours, which may seem quite low in terms of smartphone standards, but on a flip phone, it's a very energy efficient thanks to the Snapdragon 210, the smaller screen, and also the OS. It actually can still last you for quite a while, around two days, three days before before you need to recharge it again. Now a closer look at the design here, um, one difference with the Alcatel Go Flip from T-Mobile is that the T-Mobile variant does have a glossier finish versus the track phone version which uh, has more of a matte finish to it. There's a 3.5mm headphone jack, always nice to see, and also a micro USB port for charging. And then we have a very large and comfortable space for the controls, the D-pad and also the numbers which are in T9 layout. So obviously if you're typing out messages, it's going to be a little bit of a tedious process because it's not in a QWERTY standard, but uh, overall there is predictive text and again the keys themselves are really large and spacious. So overall we have a pretty decent construction as well as design for the really low price now of just $10. Taking a closer look at the software and performance, the front display shows you the time and date. You can also use it to see information like the volume, and also if you have a missed call or incoming call, you can also see it displayed on the front. Now one thing you aren't able to do, however, just like with the previous device, is use the front screen as a viewfinder for the camera for taking selfies, which is a little unfortunate. That would have been a nice feature to see. The screen here is still a regular TN panel, which means that it, the view angles aren't going to be the best, but overall it's still quite bright as well as uh, nice in terms of the colors. Now I can tap on the side here to access shortcuts, which is a new uh, function that allows us to quickly toggle on or off Wi-Fi, change the screen brightness. We can also do things like uh, access the calculator at an easy click. Now on the previous version of KaiOS, this was actually not a function that we had. Instead, if you tap on this key, it simply brings up some contacts that you can quickly speed down. Dial. So it's an improvement in terms of usability, in my opinion. And then the main screen, which is going to be that list of applications, still remains about the same. Although legibility of apps is a little better on the new phone because we can see very quickly in the top what the app is called if we are moving through. It's a little easier and larger to read versus before where we had the name for each app display underneath in smaller font. The store definitely opens up a lot more possibilities. Now it's still not going to be as extensive as say on Android's Play Store, but uh, overall we have a nice collection of additional content that you can download, 
play around with and expand the utility of the device. So under recommended, there's things like chess. There is also kind of a um, history app. There's also a voice recorder that you can download, motivational uh, quotes. There's also a barcode scanner, which is pretty useful. Um, other timers and small games that can also be downloaded and played. Now, a lot of these apps are written in HTML, so they are going to be web apps as opposed to on Android. Native apps take up more space. It's not going to be, again, super demanding or graphically intensive as on regular Android native apps, but for a basic feature phone like this, it's definitely the right strategy to go with. Uh, if you want to get an app, just simply tap on it, and it's going to be very quick to download. We should be able to see it as one of the new apps under our last page. Uh, so we can directly tap onto it and you can see that we are able to kind of shift up, down, left, and right using the D-pad to move along. And um, overall, again, it's actually not too bad as you uh, might think from such low-end hardware and Tower of Babel is uh, similar actually to Stack. So you have to try and align the building when it comes down using your reaction, and if you're off a little bit, then the tower is going to get smaller and smaller, and the objective is to get taller and taller with as many matches as you can. Actually having a D-pad to use to physically press down uh, does make it pretty enjoyable to, again, play back some of these basic games with. And again, it's doing a better job than expected. Again, all of these titles and games were features that we simply didn't have on the T-Mobile version of the phone, even though it was identical in terms of hardware. Uh, they they even have a little bit of haptic vibration to them so whenever you hit a wall the phone actually does vibrate a little bit so the games of course are up to developers but with KaiOS being a very promising up-and-coming OS we should be seeing more games and apps in the coming days as well so some other productivity tools by the way which you are able to download include access uh, to again QR code scanners, barcode scanners, weather apps, news apps, radio apps, or internet radio apps, that is, uh, which are, again, all accessible and do function well. Pill Maze is essentially a bootleg copy or a clone of Pac-Man, but um, overall is still quite entertaining to play around with. There's the same ghosts and kind of um, avatars that we can use, and overall it does work quite well. Jump Jump is another fun game. Basically there's platforms that are moving across the screen, and the objective is to use your reaction to get higher and higher. It's a little bit fast in terms of the animations, but uh, overall it is functional, and um, again, another fun little title that you can try out. Moving back to some of the core features of the phone, let's start with, say, the camera that we previously jumped into. This hasn't really changed compared to previously. You have the same sensor. It is able to also record video in terms of other settings that we have, include a self-timer. You can turn on or off grids. Here's some photos that we captured using the camera. And again, when you're outdoors uh, with sufficient sunlight, it actually isn't that bad. In fact, it does a little bit better than expected, I'd say. But again, it's not going to be a replacement for a more expensive camera that you may have. However, again, for the super budget price that you're paying here, again, only $10, I would say it actually is a decent little camera that is built on in. Next, in terms of the web browsing, again, it's one of the highlights of KaiOS because the browser is based on Firefox. So you are able to easily go to websites like YouTube and watch them back directly. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is because the resources of the phone are still quite low in terms of RAM, uh, to optimize on system performance, there is no multitasking in KaiOS. So you aren't able to switch back and forth between, say, the other apps. In fact, there's no way to preserve an app in the memory. Every time that you go back into the home screen, the app completely uh, gets purged from memory. And it does ensure that the performance, for the most part, is still quite smooth and fluid for an entry-level device in terms of the processing power. Again, the ability for you to watch back these videos in this horizontal widescreen view is already an upgrade compared to before, where there was no software feature for you to switch the screen orientation. So even if we went into full screen mode before, the video would still keep on playing in this tiny portrait mode, which was really cumbersome. So it's another nice subtle update using the software. The default search engine is Google. Even though this particular phone doesn't have Google Assistant in some of the Google apps like uh, Maps uh, and also YouTube, 
YouTube pre-installed. That's just because this is one of the earliest KaiOS phones released, and there are even newer phones available now with KaiOS. In fact, Alcatel have even released the MyFlip 2.0 and even the 3.0 just a few months back with updated hardware that's a little bit faster and also access to an even newer version of KaiOS uh, for software that enables access to those Google services. As for being a phone and making phone calls, again, it hasn't really changed compared to the original MyFlip that we checked out, which is to say that reception quality is also quite good, and uh, I was able to consistently get around three bars in the Seattle region. The microphone itself uh, picked up my voice without any issues, even in slightly crowded environments. Again, having a flip phone is just a really comfortable form factor because your mouth is naturally closer to the mic. So taking a look at the settings here, again, it is divided by network and connectivity. There's another tab for personalization, which we are able to do things like change the display uh, wallpaper and there are a few different uh, presets which are built on in there's a separate wallpaper gallery and you can see that they are quite vibrant and beautiful some of them are very similar to android others which are borrowed from uh, the days of firefox os so we can take our pick and uh, choose you know the version that we like the most maybe this one and i can tap on save and it will be changed. So overall UI navigation is pretty snappy and responsive. In terms of search, we can also change the search engine from here. Uh, so all of these can be customized. Security, I can even add a screen lock if I wanted to, uh, and also add a password. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Alcatel My Flip. Again, the version here from TrackPhone slash uh, Total Wireless and some other CDMA networks here in the US uh, just really feels like a completely different phone than the T-Mobile slash uh, GSM variant, uh, which is simply missing a lot of the features, even though the technical specifications, including the Qualcomm Snapdragon 210, the camera, the overall form factor remains unchanged, which is already quite good for a budget phone, especially now that you can find this for under $9, which is just an insane value. Minor complaints would be the fact that, again, if you are someone doing a lot of text entry, then again, flip phones in general are still not going to be your best bet uh, compared to, say, keyboard phones and that BlackBerry style from yesteryear that had a full QWERTY layout just because those are a little faster for typing things out versus this which requires a little bit more hunting and pecking and pressing the keys multiple times to do the various uh, commands but uh, if you're primarily making phone calls you want a simple device then this is definitely worth a closer look so you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below a great backup phone a great uh, travel phone device for kids or the elderly this has been the track phone slash total wireless edition of the Alcatel MyFlip KaiOS powered flip phone.